Hi, welcome back to the episode of the FRC Robotics 101. My name is Dang. I'm back at it again today at the very end of the build season. Having designed the robots, having tested it with prototypes and manufactured all of these parts, we have finally reached the one of the biggest steps of the construction plan, which is also the most rewarding one, and which is the final product construction. And in today's episode, I will show you how to build one of these bad boys in a um, convenient and efficient way and how to organize your team in this process. This session of the construction plan will require the cooperation of all members of the technical teams. But most important of all is obviously the mechanical team. During this time, the mech team is going to be really busy since they are in charge of building the robot itself and they have to test everything all over again and also finalizing the mock environments for the drivers to test our robots on. So let's jump right into the building of the robots. Starting with all the, uh, starting with all the manufacturing parts, you should start putting together individual parts of the robot first. And this process can be sped up by dividing your team into many different groups. And each group contains about two to three people. And each group will only take care of one mechanism at a time. For example, the FRC 2020 game task will require a lot of different mechanism, then we can divide your team into about four to five groups. The first group will take care of the drive base. The next group will take care of the shooter. Next one, take care of the storage. And uh, the last wheel will take care of the climber and also the wheel spinner. Putting all the number of members in a group aside, you should build your robot in a feasible order. So you should start to put together the drive base first. After that, ask the electronics and the programmers to test this drive base right away to make sure that it is controllable. And for the mechanical side, make sure that the wheels are uh, lubricated or and the chains or the belts are nicely tensioned. Next up, start putting uh, together the rest of the mechanisms. Start with the mechanism that needs more testing first, of course, to leave more work for the programmers and the, electri the electrical side. In this process, of course, follow the cats precisely. Keep all the measurements, all the uh, numbers, Keep them in mind and keep them, of course, in paper and follow them step by step carefully. And so the, the bot doesn't go on uh, uh, problems because of offsets or fails or something like that. Before putting everything together, the programming team and the electrical team should get their hands on um, wiring and testing of each individual mechanism to make sure that each of them works smoothly before putting them to uh, make them work well together. After all of this, of course, you will move on to put the robots together. Similar to the order before, start with the drive base first and then build everything up from there. After putting the drive base on, you should uh, take care of the storage first because it's the storage mechanism is usually the mechanism that, it's, uh, that it is uh, integrated into the drive base. And the rest of the mechanism, like the shooter or the wheel spinner, is uh, usually regarded as um, individual mechanism. So they can be put on the robots in later process. And when building the robot itself, make sure and keep this in mind that every part of a robot should be fixed together, of course, except moving parts. 
because you don't want to have a wobbly part hanging desperately on your robots while you are driving very fast on the game field. This is against the game rule. Speaking of the game rule, there is uh, a very important game rule to keep in mind is to keep every part inside of the drive base perimeter. This should be taken into consideration in the cap process, but in the mechanical size and the final product construction, there might be different offsets. So um, you should take care of this and uh, cut off the offsets and make sure that the game rule is not violated. After your bad boy is finally well constructed and all the members of the mechanical team have made sure that the robot is put together uh, and all the fixed parts is well fixed and durable enough for the game itself. The programmers and the electrical teams will get their hands on putting together the brain of the robots and teach it to drive around and function, functionalize like um, what we hope it will do in the game itself. Unfortunately, why the electrical team and the programmers teams will uh, teach the robot to drive, the mechanical team doesn't get any rest because they will get their hands on doing uh, a very important part. If we forget this, we will be very likely to be uh, removed from the game, which is the bumper rule. Now, the bumper is basically a protection gear around the robot itself to not only protect your own robot, but protect the game field and protect other teams' robot too. The bumper is made from two pool noodles. Uh, this material is usually new to uh, new members, but this is very widely used. And uh, recent, in recent years, it has become the official material for the bumper making, which is the pool noodles. The bumper is very simple. It only consists of two pool noodles put together on a on, the, on another side usually two centimeter thick wood and usually plywood and around all of them will be fabric the usually used fabric will be recommended in the game manual itself but the most important thing about the fabric is it have to be in two colors which is red and blue standing for the two alliances on the game. And two versions of your bumper must be made available on the game. But for newer teams and uh, starting teams, they usually don't have enough material or the budget to make almost two versions and have them shipped it over the world or bring them to the, uh, to the game field. So we can use a very interesting mechanism for this bumper, which is the color changing bumper, which basically just which basically just a two-sided fabric. One side is the red and the other one is the blue one. And they have like a flank outside and if you flip them up, it's blue, and if you flip it down, it's red. It is a very interesting mechanism to implement on your little robot. And another thing about the bumper, in the game, your bumper should be able to be removed from your robot uh, in around five minutes only. So you should make your uh, bumper fit your robot well, and uh, it can be removed from the robot in between of the games quickly enough. So just make sure that your bumper fits. Choose the bumper that fits your robot the most. And the rest, just test your robot well. In the next episode, we will cover the importance of the drive team, which is a very crucial part 
of the winning of almost every single team in the FRC itself. So good luck on building your bad boy and we will see you next time.